Hello and welcome to the Monday, April 22nd, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And we got more changes to CVEs and how vulnerabilities will be communicated. MITRE, the company who is in charge of assigning CVE numbers, so far used the CVE JSON 4.0 format. Well, they now started releasing vulnerability information in the JSON 5.0 format and JSON 4.0 will go away end of June. So we don't have a lot of time here to react and switch over to the new feed. Not sure how sort of backwards compatible it is. I still have to look in it, into it myself, but uh, definitely something that you need to get ready for if you are consuming these feeds directly. This may, of course, also affect various open source and commercial products that are reading this feed directly from MITRE. And then we have more vulnerabilities in enterprise file transfer software. Remember all the chaos that Move It uh, caused a few months back? This time it's Crush FTP, Crush FTP version 11 be below 11.1 have a vulnerability that can be used to escape their VFS and download system files. So this has been patched in version 11.1.0. And in particular, if you are exposing Crush FTP to the public, you should patch now as CrowdStrike states that this vulnerability has already been exploited. There are also patches available for version 10 of Crush FTP and version 9 according to Crush FTP is no longer supported. So no one should be running it anymore according to them. And we have an interesting vulnerability or maybe, well, an easy to abuse feature in a GitHub that is being abused in order to distribute malware. One of the problem with repositories like GitHub is that, well, there are different user accounts with a widely different reputation. For example, one account that you probably would trust most of the time is Microsoft's. But there is a trick where you can make any file look like it's hosted on Microsoft's GitHub account because, well, it actually is. The trick is that you leave a comment for a commit and attach the malicious file to the comment. Later, you delete the comment. However, the file will remain part of GitHub's Microsoft repository, if you want to call it this. Basically, it's part of the Microsoft account of at GitHub. And the URL very much looks like a Microsoft GitHub URL as you're offering this link to an unsuspecting victim for download. So what is sort of an URL obfuscation trick? more a social engineering trick in that sense than actually sort of an exploit. Definitely something to be aware of. It's not clear yet if GitHub is able or will be fixing this. At the very least, I guess they could allow the repository owner to then delete these files. Disabling comments is also only possible in a temporary fashion, not sort of in a global uh, forever way. And YubiKey fixed a uh, vulnerability in its uh, YubiKey manager uh, for Windows. It only affects the Windows version of this tool. The problem here is a relatively simple privilege escalation issue. The YubiKey manager GUI tool is usually opened as an administrator. But if you then open a browser window from within the YubiKey manager GUI, it will open that browser window as an administrator, which then, of course, could lead to some privilege escalation. That bug is now fixed in the latest version, anything later than 1.2.6. Non-Windows versions do not require any kind of administrative permissions to interact with FIDO authenticators, so that's why they're not affected. And then just a quick update on Palo Alto. The sort of usual whack them all continues where attackers are coming up with new exploits that in particular are bypassing some of the early threat IDs that uh, Palo Alto published as part of its 
threat prevention subscription. So just make sure you keep it updated. I'll link again in the show notes uh, to the advisory by Palo Alto so you get the latest and greatest update. Well, that's it again for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. If you are just occasionally listening, definitely nice if you subscribe. And also, this podcast is available via your Amazon Alexa if you want to add it to your morning flash briefing. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.